Perfect. Right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Stuart Monk from the Southwest AHSN. Um, delighted to be here. So thanks to Judith Heath uh, and yourself, Michael, as well, for inviting me to speak. Um, I'm going to try and do a few things in this presentation. Give you a quick overview of the AHSN, uh, who we are and what we're doing now and where our focuses are, especially related to digital and some of the products that we're involved in at the moment. Um, I'm also going to use the opportunity, I've invited Ray Jones, who's an academic from Plymouth University, along to talk about one of the local programmes of digital work that we've been supporting called EPIC. Um, so Ray will interject about halfway through before I come back just to finish off, hopefully get you thinking about how you could make most use of us as a system. Right, um, quick show of hands first of all, who's heard of an AHSN? Ooh, that's good. Who, who, who could put your hand on your heart and tell your friend in the pub that you know what we do? Good. <laughs> um, well, we've been around for six and a half years. There are 15 of us in England. Um, I think it's fair to say that in the first five years of our licence, we all did lots of different things across England. And when it came to re-licensing us, probably about two years ago now, NHS England was very firm that yes, by all means, do some good local work that suits local needs, but please commit as a network of 15 to spreading a handful of products, whether those are digital or medical technologies and novel ways of delivering health and care services. As a collective of 15, take those things forward and get them embedded in the way that health and care is delivered in your regions. So that's what we did. We're 18 months into that. Um, and it's going quite well, I have to say. We're doing okay. I think all AHSNs are performing well against our um, spread metrics that we report back on. And certainly on the digital side of things, in particular in the southwest, we're seeing quite a lot of successes actually, which I'll come on to at the end of the presentation. Um, I suppose the big thing on this slide is these three cross-cutting themes. So for us to work with an innovation, it has to do these three things, definitely these two. So for us to work with a product or a novel way of delivering a health and care service or a medical technology or a digital innovation, it can't just do that. We want it to try and help you as a system do that too. Um, now, some of those savings won't always be cash releasing. Some of them will be efficiency based, but we're not here to add cost to the system with the products that we work with. We're really firm and all the work that we do with innovators in the early stages of their product development cycles is trying to get them thinking through how they can make their product NHS accessible. In other words, focus on not just the patient benefits, but how that product is going to reduce costs from the system somehow. Really important. These are just some of the successes that we've had as a network of 15 AHSNs in our first um, five years. So this is a bit outdated now. Um, but we think we've added quite a lot of value to the country as a whole, to the way that health and care is delivered, delivered to the small business community, um, the, the, uh, the locations that are implementing our innovations, the amount of money that we've le helped leverage, so that links to the EPIC program that Ray is going to be talking um, to you about. Um, we're here to collaborate with all parts of the system, academia, the health and care system, the commercial sector, SMEs, that's our responsibility for our region really, is to join together, be the glue between all of the different innovation driven conversations around health and care, which is quite a tall order. That can also be quite a difficult story to tell back to our commissioners, but actually just being that group of people who can connect people, introduce people, host meetings, it's a really important part of what AHSNs do, it's quite difficult to report against. Um, quick, very quickly touching on um, some of the work um, that AHSNs do around artificial intelligence. Um, I'll tell you a very quick story on this. So one of the programmes that we support is called the Small Business Research Initiative and it's a Dragon's Den type process where we put a call out to small businesses to say, right, the NHS needs products that do this, this or this, so can you come forward with your product ideas and the NHS will give you some money to go forward and develop it. And I was at one of these panel sessions two weeks ago and of the 10 innovations that we saw, all of them mentioned artificial intelligence, but only one of them was actually using artificial intelligence. So there's a lot of language at the moment around digital innovation especially. There are a lot of people claiming to be doing AI that aren't, they're just throwing it in there as a, as a buzz phrase. So 
it's really difficult, I guess, for you as a system to receive all of this and try to make some sense of it. And that's something that we're here to help with. So please knock on our door and come and ask us if you've got questions related to specific products or technologies. Because as a network of 15, we are trying to make ourselves subject matter experts around artificial intelligence and more broadly, the latest thinking around digital innovation. Right, I'm just going to touch upon some of the programmes that we've been um, working on in the South West just to give you a quick example of some of the work that we're doing, not necessarily at the spread and implementation end, but in trying to help make a few digital innovation products more market ready by verifying them or validating them in the real world of the, the NHS. Um, I'll come back to the patient level link data sets. The Bearing AI work that we've been doing, so Bearing, a small business um, run by a chap called Ig Ignat Drozdov, who came through the Small Business Research Initiative programme that I mentioned. And five years ago, Ignat was given um, just over a million pounds worth of funding, actually, to train his artificial intelligence algorithm using Sunset's <coughs> linked data set, the Symphony data set that some of you might have heard of. So Ignat used his algorithm, looked at that data set, and then at the end used it to develop a piece of software that you can run from anywhere that uses five characteristics about somebody, very simple, age, weight, sex, and a couple of other things that I can't remember, to then predict the probability of that person presenting to ED in the next <coughs> year. And it just spits out a number, a probability, 88% that you will pre um, pre present to A&E in the next year. So we've taken that piece of software, it's quite innovative, but what do you do with it and how do you use it if you're the NHS? And we've, um, for the last couple of years, been supporting some work with Somerset CCG um, and that's been funded by NHS England to try and use that practically in a general practice. So we've had patients sitting down and, and putting in the five <coughs> characteristics about themselves selves before they go into a GP consultation, just to see how that piece of information that they're given on their probability of presenting to ED impacts upon that conversation with the GP afterwards. And we're trying to just gather that data get back together. We're, we're testing it in a few more practices <coughs> to see how that changes that dynamic between the patient and the, and the, and, and the primary care clinician. <coughs> it's not finished yet. This isn't ready for market. We're just trying to get a sense of how this technology can be used practically to benefit the system somehow. Um, then real world validation, so this is, yeah, as the name suggests, evaluating digital products uh, in, the, in the real world, in the context of the NHS. So um, the Improve Well app, um, we've been looking at with Royal Cornwall. This is quite simple. It takes frontline clinician mainly ideas for improvements. Those can be small, large, in, as long as they're specific to their context and the hospital, and then turns them into improvement projects. And what we're trying to do with the innovators in Provewell and Royal Cornwall on the evaluation side of things is start to understand what the impact of those ideas on the quality of services that's being delivered at Royal Cornwall can be. So that's quite simple. We're also looking at eConsult with, um, with Devon CCG. So eConsult's quite widely established technology. Um, what we're not getting a sense of from, any, and this is where the network of 15 AHSNs is handy as well, it doesn't seem to be a really robust business case that underlies the use of eConsult. In other words, if you spend this on the product, you are going to, as a system, yield X cost savings and benefits, as well as you know, what, what the patients think of it. And again, there's lots of mixed views from different parts of the country, different CCGs, different general practices around how this is being received. So we're trying to work with Devon to unpick some of that. Uh, and then finally, the My Sunrise app that's a locally developed um, piece of technology by Technical Health, um, who, George Brighton, a clinical entrepreneur, if you like. Um, we've been supporting that piece of work with the Peninsula Cancer Alliance, and that, that My Sunrise pathway app for cancer patients is now being rolled out across the peninsula, as far as I can understand. Coming back to the patient level linked data sets, this was touched upon earlier, right at the start of today, when we were talking about data sharing. One of our key philosophies at the South West AHSN, and we're very fortunate, one of my colleagues, Richard Blackwell, um, very um, programming minded, um, very passionate about the, the power of a patient level linked data set. That's an enabler for us. We will continue to support the system down here in, this, um, in our striving to try and 
end up with one of these. And we're starting to see the, the fruits of success in Cornwall and in parts of Devon as well, where organisations are agreeing to share their data. Um, and then the next step, of course, is working out you know, how you as a system can benefit from that, from that link data set. Um, the ITP and AAC product spread, I'll come back to you shortly. Ray, I'm going to hand over to you now, if you're OK to say a few words about Epic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so hi, I'm, uh, I'm Ray Jones. I'm Professor of Digital Health at the uh, University of Plymouth Centre for Health Technology. And um, thanks, Stuart, for letting me come into this bit. Uh, so I'm, I'm the director of a project called EPIC, which stands for, if we get the slides up, uh, eHealth, Productivity, Innovation, Ecom, and the Isles of Scilly. Anybody from the Isles of Scilly here? No, didn't make it. Very important, the Isles of Scilly, video consultations, and all sorts of everything to do with the remote. That's one of the major things that they're really interested in. Um, so this has been a three-year project funded by the good old EU. Um, let's go back a minute. Um, so here we are on the first day of uh, still being in the EU. And uh, we've worked with um, Stuart and others at the South Coast AHSN, also with Kerno Health, uh, Ollie, who's over there, uh, with, with Care Homes, that's the CPIC, Patients Association, and a whole range of uh, collaborators, thanks. Um, uh, so our aims have been to, uh, uh, top one is it? Bottom, bottom one. Bottom, oh yeah. Uh, so our, our aims, we've been funded by the European Regional Development Fund, so our aims are to help small businesses uh, develop stuff that will be useful within the health and social care sector, and at the same time try and get a longer term aim of improving health and well-being. So our focus has been on the small and medium enterprises, SMEs, but of course trying to at the same time get that culture change uh, that they need to be able to get into the health and social care sector. Um, what do I need to point it or something? No, it's not going to go. Ah, there we go. Uh, so we've been doing a whole range of uh, conferences, workshops. Uh, we've been driving our epic um, van around the place with, with robots. So we're taking a very wide uh, view of what is digital health from, from apps and websites and video consultations through to, to robots. Next. Um, we've been doing webinars, one-to-one -one meetings. Interesting about uh, webinars, and there was this discussion about um, uh, t the one-to-many uh, patient idea. We, we've, been, we've been using webinars in the University of Plymouth since about 2005. We actually invented our own software at the time. Now, you know, there's now standard software. And we, we run webinars regularly for 500 nurses across Devon and Cornwall. And there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing this for, for people with diabetes. You know, one, one, one diabetic nurse uh, running a session for 30 people on, online who can be anonymous and then have question and answers. It's, you know, there's the software and routine stuff around that we should be using. Um, next. Uh, so one of the things we've been trying to do is to build this sort of network, this ecosystem, getting SMEs uh, like Paul and, and, and Ultramed at the back there, uh, talking to people in, in the hospital, in primary care, to other SMEs, bringing students in, bringing voluntary groups in. So we've been working quite a lot with um, the uh, sort of Volunteer Cornwall, with other voluntary groups, with, um, with the Health Watches, and so on. Next. And uh, we also had a, a large challenge fund, large-ish challenge fund, 600k, um, that um, the South Coast HSN helped us to uh, dish out to SMEs applying for funding. So we've had a variety of different uh, people applying for either small grants or slightly larger grants. Next. Now, taking an example, um, this is one that's un underway just at the moment. Uh, and this, this really follows on the idea of, uh, Kate mentioned test bed Cornwall. So we're, we're really keen on the idea of test bed Cornwall, both for testing out robotics or testing out software. So there's some of the work that Stuart mentioned about clinic and e-consult, for example, is the idea of Cornwall being a test bed. So in the moment in North Cornwall, uh, there's a trial going on of, uh, of Genie, which is a sort of uh, tabletop uh, robot that helps people make use of uh, social media, video calls, and, and also you've got a call to a call centre. Next. Uh, we've also got a, a trial starting um, in uh, very soon, in a couple of weeks' time, uh, where we're bringing across, you may have seen anyone see Time magazine? You might, anyone who sees Time magazine will have seen Stevie on the front of Time. So Stevie is a, a sort of a pepper humanoid type robot um, that's been developed by Trinity College Dublin and we're going to be trying it out in reflections down the road in, in Camborne. Uh, Stevie will be running some bingo sessions in the, in the day centre. <laughs> Next. Um, we've also tried to, uh, to help um, 
uh, some of the SMEs come together. So business to business um, sort of links, I think, is important if we're trying to get that critical mass in Cornwall. Uh, so I think Paul Paul has um, been collaborating now with Elephant. I think we had a hand in helping you get together with Elephant. Elephant kiosks are just up the road. Um, uh, who hadn't really been selling in, to, in Cornwall at all before um, Epic. Next. We think that um, we know, we know the, the, um, the, the, the characteristics of, of Cornwall and actually the whole of the South West, it's older people, it's rurality. So the older people bit, where it's really, key, it's really key that we look at accessibility and usability. So accessibility might be the kiosks, usability might be in the design of, of the front end. Next. And we clearly need to get uh, the amount of time spent, that spent on data collection down. So a recent paper showed that, that nurses are spending about 30% of their time either on documentation or uh, administration. We should be using voice. And uh, I'm r really up with uh, what Masood said earlier on. Uh, voice is, is really key to what we should do here. We, while, I'm, while I'm fixing your, uh, your wound on your, on your leg, I should just be giving that data straight over to voice. And we've got companies in Cornwall, High9, uh, uh, FutureSync Software, for example, down in um, Penzance, who, who, who are specialized in developing stuff for voice. Uh, so we, we really need voice data entry as a front end. Next. Uh, so one of the things that we've been doing is trying to do this culture change thing. We're trying to normalize the idea of using voice. So we're focusing not just on uh, on the health services, but also social services, care homes. So we've been working uh, with care homes, and we've got now uh, 150 care homes with a, an echo spot in using Alexa. So we're just trying to get that whole idea of using voice in the care homes as being the normal thing that you do. And we chose echo spot, it's actually now redundant, we're gonna go move over to echo show, but there you go. Um, uh, because you can also get the small screen. So we're getting care homes into the idea that they can a video call to um, re relatives, to family. Um, we, we've done some work in the past with getting schools intergenerational support for care homes. So it's that whole idea of normalizing the idea of voice and video in care homes. And um, we think that, that, that we've, we really need to get the, the video calls normalized in care homes as well. Um, we've yet to find the Cornish SME link for that. Most of the video consultation seems to be coming from the likes of Microsoft or Livy or outside. We need to find somebody doing it locally. Next. Uh, so um, we, we are hoping, uh, despite all the politics that we've got another three months, uh, we're not allowed to say so, but we, we think we're 99% 90, 90 of the way there to getting another three years worth of Epic 2. So we uh, can do this knowledge transfer, the support of S bringing SMEs together with patient groups, together with uh, cl clinicians together with finance in this sort of ecosystem uh, and we hope that that will um, be able to carry on working with the AHSN on that and I'm <coughs> focusing particularly I think on voice video and robotics I think is the area that uh, I, know, I know the last section is you know what should be would be known for <coughs> I think that's what Cornwall should be known for uh, voice video and robotics and and volunteers so lots of these volunteers because we've got um, We've got 500 nursing students per year, so we've got 1,500 nursing students, uh, a good proportion of which are in Cornwall, the rest are in Devon. Um, they are now becoming digital health champions. They're helping uh, in care homes to promote the use of, of, uh, of digital. They're helping in, in outpatient um, departments. We've got uh, one of our, our student nurses was, was in pre-op. Um, she decided that um, the, pa the patients could be shown how to use um, my COPD, so she was, she's becoming a digital health champion, showing patients how to use that. We've got this culture shift that we need, <coughs> and we've got the volunteers and the students who can help doing it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Five minutes. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Ray. Um, so you've heard from Ray uh, and myself about some of the local um, pieces of work that, from the just saying, and from Ray's perspective at Plymouth Uni that um, we're both involved in. Um, I just want to move on now to talk about um, some of the national or three national products that all AHSNs are helping to spread, some of which you might have heard about. Um, just to give you some examples, I suppose, of some of the work that we've been doing. Is this on your side? Yeah, sorry. Um, so there's a relatively new um, part of NHS England called the Accelerated Access Collaborative that some of you might have heard about. It was set up off the back of um, 
a paper that was published, I think it was two or three years ago, two years ago, called the Accelerated Access Review. Um, the Accelerated Access Collaborative is made up of NHS England, NHSI, NICE, the Office for Life Sciences, the AHSN Network, um, some of the commercial sector <coughs> trade associations. And it's there really just to try and support the system as a whole to uptake new technologies more quickly. Uh, and its chief executive is a lady called Sam Roberts. Um, and Sam is our AHSN network boss. So, that, so that's the, the side of NHS England that AHSN is now reporting into. And between the Accelerated Access Collaborative and another more established programme that you might have heard of called the Innovation and Technology Payment Programme, the AHSN networks as 15 work together with NHSC, with the Accelerated Access Collaborative, with NICE, all the other stakeholders, to try and embed um, a list of, I think it's now up to about 16 different medical technology and digital products into the system. And the Accelerated Access Collaborative and NHSE pay for them. That's the pump priming model that we're testing really to see if that improves uptake. So three digital products that we're looking at at the moment. This is the newest, this landed in April, S12 Solutions. Some of you might have heard about it. This is being run on an evaluation basis. So NHS England is funding different AHSN footprints to work with their local system stakeholders to evaluate the use of S12 solutions with a view that it might then be fully funded for the whole country. Um, what does it do? As the description says, it's an app and a website to connect allied mental health professionals with Section 12 approved doctors more quickly. So it's quite simple. There's nothing particularly complicated about it, but as a system, I understand that it's a very, um, there's a need there for a product like this. So um, my colleague Rupa Shilvers um, is leading on this piece of work and she is actually, she's got a very good um, relationship with the S12 Solutions Innovators who I think are based in the southeast of England somewhere. Um, we don't have a test bed site in this part of the country yet, but we'd love one. Um, I know Rupa's had conversations with Devon and Cornwall in particular. But if anyone here is interested in picking up on, you know, doing some pilot work around this innovation, then we'd love to talk to you. Uh, and then the final two that I want to cover, um, Heartflow has been on the ITP for 18 months. Um, it's a piece of software again, it enables more rapid diagnosis of patients with suspected coronary heart disease, avoids the use of um, cardio and angiographies. Um, this is being uptaken at some scale actually and from the eligible sites um, with the regions that we work with in Somerset, Devon and Cornwall, um, certainly Taunton, Exeter and definitely Royal Cornwall have all implemented this. Um, Plymouth is part of a clinical trial around this product so that complicates implementation there a little bit because they're already doing some work. But generally speaking with the organisations that are eligible for the funding for this product in the South West uptake's been quite good in that 18 month period. Um, my COPD is a really interesting story. Um, so this is a, again, very well established piece of technology. It's been available for CCGs to um, get hold of for free for about two and a half years now. And certainly when it was first launched on the ITP programme, the CCGs in the Southwest all ordered some licenses and they didn't have to pay for those. Um, we were involved in informing the CCGs that they could do so and we patted ourselves on the back and um, said brilliant, you know, all of our CCGs have taken up this product. This story is common to the whole of the country. I think as of April, only 14% of those licences, and there's about 4,000 that the CCGs in the South West had acquired, were being used by patients. So that for us was a big lesson in how we support implementation. It's not just about comms and letting the right people know. It's we'll be putting together more of a robust package of support to help the CCGs, to bring all of the other clinicians, the GPs, because it's quite a complex innovation, my COPD, in terms of you have to get the whole pathway engaged with it from GP all the way through to COPD acute clinician. And then there's a patient activation piece to do as well. We didn't do any of that properly. And I think we've still got quite low, low activation rates. So again, if anyone wants to talk to me about my COPD further or heart flow and about what we might do to improve uptake and ultimately get more of these, um, certainly this product in patient's hands, then I'd love to speak to you. Final thought, um, if I've got time, Michael. Um, I've given you a quick download of some of the, yeah, some national products that we're working to spread. Um, 
I'd like to come back to what Kate said actually about um, cardiology, remote monitoring of cardiology patients as a potential theme. What we are looking for, and we work quite closely with West of England and Wessex AHSNs as well, and those relationships are building and we're working more and more collaboratively with them, because I know that we've got organisations in the room from their geographies, is we would love you as a system to come to us as three AHSNs and say, right, we've got two or three things here that we would love you to support us with on the technology side. It's really difficult for us to just go off and do that without you coming to us as a system somehow and telling us what you'd like us to support you with when it comes to digital technology because we've got some resource to help do that and often the local work that we do ends up being a bit piecemeal we it's based on the connections and the people that we already know so we would love you to come to us and, and tell us what you'd like us to work on i'm talking on behalf of west of england and wessex hsn's as well okay, so. so thank you very much Stuart.